Hello YouTube, today we're going to talk about books and I'm going to try and answer an interesting question I've been asked several times, one that resonates with me because it correlates with my experience and what I've seen on the platform as a whole. And that question is, is dirty booking the secret to insane gains? I've had people who mention that they've realized that a lot of people who have good natural physiques, who tend to be more muscular than the norm, have went through a phase of dirty bulking where they got fat to extremely fat. And so the question is, is that an obligatory step in the journey of any and every natural lifter in order to be big? Because that would make sense, right? If you look at all of the top naturals and they all went through that stage, that phase, or maybe that's what it takes. Maybe that's the reason why so many people stay small is because they never actually enter a dirty book. So let's try to answer that question together because it's of great interest to you. If you want to be big as a natty, maybe you'll have to stuff your face at some point or the other. So this also questions the very nature of a book, of course. So that's going to be an interesting topic as well. How effective is a book in terms of gaining muscle? When is, too, when is the bulk becoming too much and what parameters do we need to look at? That starts with the caloric intake discussion, right? Because in reality, the hypothesis I just presented believes and states that a massive caloric influx is going to help with gains. And that is true. If you eat more, you are going to gain more. That is by default correct. The question then becomes... Is it really true that a massive influx, a massive increase in calories is also going to result in a massive increase of gains? Is it proportional? Is it the more I eat, the more I gain? Well, we'll see that it's more complicated than that because to me, the answer is yes and no. And that is what makes the entire topic of bulking so polarizing on YouTube. Many people still to this day preach bulking and tell people, oh, you want to get big, just bulk, just eat more. But that doesn't really always lead to results. A lot of people follow that and they end up with nothing to show for because they didn't approach the question properly. Since bulking is by default anabolic and that's something that you cannot take away from the practice. It's the reason why so many people like it is because you eat a lot, your body grows a lot. By default, that's what it means. Uh, I think that all of the steroid channels, the ones that focus on chemistry, have taken the term anabolic and they sort of removed its very concept and notion. So now many people have no idea what it means. Anabolism means that your body is in a state of building. It builds things. Okay. Catabolism is the opposite. The body is either not building at all or it's, destruct it's uh, destroying because it is lacking in resources to actually maintain the structure. So that is what being anabolic means. It just means that your body has the resources from the calories to be able to make things with it. It can make muscle, it can make fat, etc., etc. But it doesn't mean that it only it is only going to make muscle. That would be too too beautiful, right? If any time you were anabolic, you would build muscle, we would all be stuffing our faces with cookies and creams and cakes because that would mean that weighting, uh, gaining weight is by default gaining muscle. But if you have ever booked in your life, you know that this is not correct. It's just that when you book, you have the certitude that you are going to build muscle. There is no way around that. Whereas when you are in a deficit or at maintenance, it is possible to build muscle, but it's more uncertain because you are not really giving the body exactly what it might be needing. Now, when it comes to the distinction between muscle and fat, it's something that you quickly realize when you bulk as well. You are getting from both because the body really doesn't have the ability to utilize everything you give it. Again, it would be too beautiful. The body is going to take a portion of the calories you give it in terms of increase and it's going to put that into muscle building. And the reason why muscle building is so low down the list of necessities is because your body is really involved in keeping the organs alive. That is the main machinery. All the stuff on the side is less important, like your brain function, for example. When you cut your calories, your heart is not going to stop working, but your brain is going to become foggy. Why? Because the body thinks, okay, you're, you're just, you just won't be as smart for a few weeks, 
It's not going to kill you. We need to keep your liver and kidneys running though. So I'll put all of my energy towards that. Muscle is even lower than that. So if you give a ton of extra calories to the body, you know for a fact that it's going to use some of that to repair muscle. But the, any calories or any food that you are not going to be utilizing in that fashion will go somewhere else because just like the body cannot build anything from nothingness, right? You can't gain weight out of just air. The body also doesn't have the ability to get rid of what it doesn't need. It's not like you're going to eat a thousand calories and the body will take 300 for muscles and then ditch the 700 so that you don't gain fat. No, it will become fat. It will become adipose tissue. So there is a balance to be maintained here because if you bulk aggressively, yeah, you're going to gain muscle, but you're also gaining fat from the rest of the calories. And that is something that the dirty bulk is not really keeping in mind. Many people who dirty bulk lose sight of that. Because whatever turns into fat stays fat also. Fat and muscles are not connected, right? I know that normies like to believe that it's something I've heard or throughout my life. I'm tired of it. People will tell me, oh, when you stop lifting weights, all of that muscle is going to turn into fat. No, these are different types of tissues. They do not turn into fat. Muscular people who become fat are fat because they stopped working out so the muscles atrophied but they kept eating just as much as they did when they were training so now they're getting fat but there was no transformation it's an exchange it's not the same thing so based on what i just said we're already pretty much moving away from the very concept of the dirty bulk but you'll see that we're going to revisit it afterwards because i haven't really touched on the actual question of the video which is is the dirty bulk the key because for now it seems like the solution is simple. You want to reduce the calories in your bulk so that it all turns into muscle, right? That is the answer that most people would stop at. And I, in a sense, it's already a good thing because it already is going to discourage people from doing a dirty bulk. But the problem is that, as I said, it doesn't answer the question because the question is, if slow bulking is so great, how come all of the top natties, the big naturals, all did a dirty bulk? the uh, magical properties of the dirty bulk have not been disproven yet. So that is what leads a lot of people to actually do it. Because, and that is the main logic behind it, behind the question, some people believe that if you give a ton to the body, you will get an increase, even if you gain fat on the side. So it's, a, it's in a way a contradiction to the conservative approach of slow or lean bulking because it, in a sense, presented as leaving gains on the table, right? You leave plates on the table, you also leave gains on the table. So let's say that if you increase your calories by 300, right, you would get 10% increase in muscle mass. These people say, okay, but if you just ate a thousand calories, you would get 20% in muscle mass. So maybe you would get more fat, but also more muscle. And this is what leads people to believing that a lot of YouTubers have built their body through that, through that increase. And if I were to give you examples, you have me, but for people who are actually well known, you have Omar Izov and Alpha Destiny. These are two guys that went through the debulking phases that then came out of it big, right? When they cut down, they had big muscles. And so people were like, hmm, that to me looks interesting. Maybe I should do that. But to me, right, this is when I get into the actual discussion about the dirty bulk. The difference that you would make in terms of muscle gains between a slow and a dirty bulk is negligibly small. And this is my experience as well. Meaning that if there is, and I'm not even sure there is, a difference between a massive increase and a small conservative increase, it is so impossible to perceive that it's not even worth the hassle. But as I said, I don't think there's even one because to me that doesn't make sense, right? You give an increase or a surplus to the body, it's going to take just what it needs to build muscle. It's not like you're going to somehow talk the body into making more muscle by feeding it more. That's a pipe dream in my opinion. It doesn't work like that. You cannot force the body to build more muscle by giving it more food. This is why I said also that most people don't understand anabolism. They think food is like steroids. Steroids work like that, yes. The more you take, the more you're bullying the body into building muscle. But your apple pie that you're eating at 4 p.m., it doesn't work like that. It simply doesn't function. 
And that, to me, leads to the, the real reason why people do the deep box, because you stuff your face like I did, and you see no real increase in muscle. So why do you keep doing it? Well, for one simple reason. You do it because you're gaining size. You're becoming bigger. You're not becoming bigger because of muscle mass. You're getting fatter. But in your deluded eyes, it still counts. And I was just like that. I went to 240. I was borderline obese. But the problem is that my body dysmorphia was telling me that what I was doing was right because I was getting bigger. And so since I only cared about size, well, I was completely oblivious and blind to the fat, to the fact that I didn't look good at all and felt good either, but I was at least getting bigger. This is a trap. It's a trap set up by, by your own mental delusions, and it's tough to see through it. It's the reason why I want to make sure that you don't actually even enter that mindset. Then you also have strength. A lot of people call it strength accumulation to size gains, and so they think, okay, as long as I gain strength and I become stronger, I will become bigger. That is incorrect. If you gain weight, you're going to move more weight, okay? It doesn't take a genius to understand that. This is especially true with the overhead press and the bench. Put 50 pounds on your body, on your frame, you will put 100 pounds on your bench. Why? Because your leverages are much better. You didn't gain much muscle at all, or at least not as much as you think the gain in bench press strength should lead to. You think you're going to get those massive pecs and shoulders? Cut down, it's it's nothing. It was all fat. So it's not something to uh, to follow to be able to assess size. When I was bulked up, I had a 335 bench because I was fat. It didn't make my pectoral muscles grow bigger. Just because I could handle the weight doesn't mean that I suddenly had access to massive hypertrophy. I could handle that weight because of the fat. So when the fat was gone, I regressed back to what, to what I was supposed to lift with a proper body fat percentage. So for the people who focus on strength gains to explain why they dirty pork, yeah, it's not going to lead too much because for bodybuilding, it's going to be useless. But even for powerlifting, if you can't bench, like, I don't know, a, a reasonable amount of weight without being super fluffy, borderline obese, guess what? The people you're going to compete in within your weight class are going to bench more than you because they got there without actually stuffing their face. And if they stuffed their face, they would be stronger than you. So it's not something that actually works. These are the two actual reasons why people dirty bulk. It's the size increase and the strength increase, but the two are simple illusions. And I can tell you that every single dirty bulker you've ever seen fell into that trap. The gains they, they made weren't real. These disappeared after a while, both strength and size. And any gain that they actually managed to attain during that stage that they kept afterwards weren't due to the excess in calories. They were just due to the surplus. So if they were just in a surplus, they would have made these gains regardless. All of the rest is fluff. And to me, I argue that people like this, people like me, would have been better off with a slow book because your body can only build so much and it takes time to build. So instead of just going completely insane with the dirty book and then thinking that whatever result you get is something you're going to keep, it would have been better to be slow and steady with a conservative approach because the gains would have been just as good without all of the fat gains and the heightened body dysmorphia. This also uh, puts the topic of time on the table. People do the book because they want to speed up time. You want to gain size and strength quickly, but the problem is that you're getting neither. So the time that you spent stuffing your face is time wasted. If you had just been patient and built the same stats without the dirty book, you would have been able to attain them and retain them afterwards. So to give you an example of that, an increase of 4% in your calories over time is always better than 40% because the body can only use so much. I've already explained that. You give calories to the body, it's going to take a percent of that to build muscle and the rest becomes fat. The best thing you can do is try to get that percent, that percentage to be as close to possible as 100%, knowing that it's not really something realistic, and then go from there. Make sure that most of it is used for muscle gains. And then if you gain a few, a few, micro milligrams of fat on the side, it's not the end of the world. But if you start getting more fat than muscle, that is when it becomes a problem. And most people are in that situation. They gain much more fat and then get muscle 
on the book and that is not normal. It truly is not. And the worst part of all of that is that it's not just that you could have made better gains or at least similar gains with the slow book. The worst part is that after you're done with your dirty book, now you have to lose the fat in a deficit, meaning that all of your performance are going to go down the drain. So you can kiss all of that strength goodbye and all of that size goodbye. It's going to go away. You won't keep it, right? I bulked up to 240. When I cut down all of that fat, I was 210. That's 30 pounds of fat. And it's a testimony that every single uh, natural uh, bodybuilders or YouTuber on this platform will tell you. Every time you cut and you think that at X weight you will be shredded, you won't. You won't even be come close to shredded. You have so much more fat on your frame than you think. And the more you dig, the worse you feel about yourself because you realize that you just wasted your time. Now, I'm not advocating for low body fat for naturals, but to me, between 12 and 16, 17%, maybe 18% is reasonable. Most people who do the book go into the 20s and that is when it becomes a problem because the worst part too is that the fatter you get, the higher you go in percentages, the less anabolic you become in terms of muscle building because your body is now acclimated to building fat, your testosterone is lowered, so you build less muscle. So you actually shoot yourself in the foot. And the worst part is that the cut is most likely going to make you lose muscle on top of that because you are going to do a suicide cut. You are already not patient with your bulking practices, so there's no chance in hell that you're going to be actual, actually patient with your cutting practices. So you're going to lose a ton of muscle mass as you cut. And you might enter what is known as the diet purgatory. It's people who dirty bulk and then crash diet all year round. And you know what these people get at the end? Peanuts, nothing. They get no gains. These are the people that stay the same for 10 years. Why? Because they are constantly yo-yo dieting. They are constantly gaining and losing fat and their muscle gains are minimal. Plus, you also damage your body and your mental health as you gain all of that weight because you just don't feel good. Your tendons have to handle more weight. It's not a good thing. And it's an unhealthy approach to progression because you become a spoiled brat. You want everything right now. I want to gain an inch on my arms right now. Well, guess what? If you get an inch on your arm within six months, it's fat. Now, maybe not six months, but three months, it's fat. There's no way it's muscle. And the worst part is that you will realize that too late. And when you cut down, your arm will be just as small as it used to be. And uh, in terms of what I prescribe, as I said, I prescribe a sustainable, patient approach because to me, it always leads to the best result. The problem is that people want quick results. They want quick visual changes. And so they will continuously flock to the debugs and try to invent reasons as to why, like what I just described, as if a massive caloric increase is something that unlocks magical powers like you turn Super Saiyan. There is nothing in the body that dictates that at a certain threshold of caloric increase, the anabolic properties of muscle building are going to be increased. If anything, science proves the opposite. You gain less muscle when you are stuffing your face and you become higher body fat. So, to answer the question of the title, is dirty bulking the key to crazy gains? Nope, not at all. Quite the opposite, actually. People who got big off of the dirty bulk, as I said, got big in spite of the dirty bulk and not because of it. We had to pay the price that we actually put in when we entered that practice and we really got nothing to show for. I would be much bigger now, today, if I had never dirty bulked. The best gains of my life were done on a very, very slow bulk. And I wasted years trying to cut back on all of the fat. And I'm still dealing with some of the consequences because guess what? When you put all of that fat on the body, it leaves a mark. I have certain parts of my body like my love handles that used to be relatively small and now they gain fat like this because of the dirty bulk. I got love handles during the dirty bulk and now they have become a problem. You also have to keep in mind that when you are gaining massive amount of fat, it's doing something to the body and the way it actually reacts and its anabolic properties. So I have a simple question for you. Do you want to be big now or do you want to be big forever? Do you want to be a capricious child that just wants to gain 20 pounds in two months? Or do you want the slow approach with mass, muscle mass that you will be able to keep? I think the answer is easy to offer. 
always keep in mind that impatience will force you to be patient, right? The more impatient you are with your diet or your training, the more time off you'll have to take or recovery windows you're going to have to open to be able to make up for your mistakes. So you'll be patient regardless of what happens. You're better off making the decision yourself. Muscle gain is slow, all right? Fast, uh, fat gain is fast. So don't trade one for the other. Don't think that you're getting all of that muscle with dirty books when in reality you're just getting fat because they're not ex exchangeable. You will not be able to turn that fat into muscle or different tissue. Or if, you, or if you manage, you'll have to do a recomp. And guess what? A recomp is 15 times slower than a slow bulk. And it's what I'm going through right now. I am paying the price of my mistakes. And I can tell you that if you couldn't handle the lengthy period of time and patience required to do a slow conservative bulk, you certainly don't have the patience to go through a recomp. So don't even do that to yourself. You're skinny and you're small right now. Okay, don't, don't worry about it. You'll be big one day. Only if you take your time. Putting fat on your frame will make you big, aka fat. There is absolutely no point. So stay away from dirty bulks as much as you can. Even if you think that it's going to solve all of your problems, it won't. Fat gains is going to happen as you bulk regardless, so you'll bulk up your frame anyways, but we want to minimize the amount of fat we put in and maximize the muscle gain. To me, that is an evidence and that is the answer to the question that this video posed. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.